Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Hello to you all and welcome to the show. This week we're in Luton to meet Kim Gohan who has started her own bereavement group. But first we're at the Bishop Chandler Catholic College in Birmingham. They had an afternoon of Irish music entertainment and a display of how to play Gaelic football featuring some of their students. Bishop Chandler School has got a, a massive Irish community here. It's very much at the heart of the King's Heat community. Uh, lots of the students who come to our school are, are from a, a, an Irish background or a heritage with your first or second generation. Um, so we get a lot of students in who are very, very proud to be Irish. We do what's called a Bishop's Got Talent event most, uh, most weeks and uh, today was a little snap of our Irish talent and we got a lot of students again from that Irish background who are very proud of their heritage and again it comes across whether it's music or dance or creative arts or sport uh, and again it's showcasing to the other young people at the school to hopefully inspire them uh, to be passionate about where they come from and hopefully celebrate.
If you talked and stopped anybody in the corridor to be able to tell you who their parents or their grandparents or wherever and what part of Ireland they're from. So I know for a fact Mayo, Galway, uh, I'm from Wicklow, my mother's from Wexford and uh, um, yeah, other parts of, of Ireland very much represented in the school here. I, I'm from Dublin originally but uh, mum and dad live down in Kildare uh, in Nice, uh, not far from Mr O'Connor. Um, so yeah, we've been living down there for 20 odd years now in Nice. So I get home a good bit, which I'm lucky because the job that I do gives me a bit of holidays to do that. So, so uh, I'm, it's a, this is a home from home, I suppose. The Gaelic football started a long time over here in Britain. Um, myself, Eddie O'Connor and a few others. Um, I'd say it must be uh, 25 years ago now at this stage. I'm here since 2005 and they all played primary school football all the way up straight up into secondary school, straight from secondary school into senior football. And now, well, two years ago, they won an All-Britain. So they've played for all their life now, pretty much, in, in England. And I can see that you've got a young group of people coming along. We've seen them demonstrating there for us today. Yeah, they're all underage, playing with local clubs in Birmingham, which is great. Doing a lot of football in the school as well and competing against other schools in Birmingham. So, uh, yeah, lo loads going on. I've been playing for the past few years now, and uh, well, since primary school, really. And it's just... Just as we got older, I seemed to get better and improve all the time. About two years ago, we went, we took a team down to London. Schools all over the country came down, and I think we only lost one game all day, and we ended up winning in the end, so we were ecstatic with that, and the whole school was. I worked for the GEA for a couple of years, first as development officer in Warwickshire, and I did my teaching degree, and I'm here since, so I'm well looked after. I was the first county county uh, officer in Warwickshire, in Britain, I think. So it was a difficult job at the start, but again, with the support of Bishop Chandler and the local community, we had plenty of lads playing football. So, yeah, it was a tough job, but it was an enjoyable job, and it got me to, to where I am today. How difficult is it to keep people or get people involved in Gaelic football? Um, it's, it can be difficult at times, but I, uh, the amount of the big Irish community we have over here has helped a lot. So we have a lot of people involved in, our, in coaching with us as well. So that's helped a lot. But... Um, You'd be amazed now that the, the, the numbers that we have in under 10s, 12s, 14s and all the way up now has, has, you know, has really took on. And lads like Patrick here as well, they do a lot of underage coaching, so that helps us as well. Every year we go down with St Brandon's underage up until under 17s. So the last time I went down was 2019. But you go out, we go down to London every year since, what is it, under 6s? Yeah, Something like that. And you do every year and it's a great day and obviously with the whole school and Brendan's is very proud of us. There's a lot of Irish heritage going through the school, so there's new kids every year. I came over from Cork originally three years ago and I've been here at this school for two years now so I settled in really well. It's great opportunities here for the Irish connection here. Have you made many friends? Yeah, tons, definitely. A nice fresh start for us and uh, definitely loads of Irish people here to, you know, bond with and everything. Birmingham is just such a great place to be. It is home from home again and it's just always been so great to live here. We're very passionate in terms of what we do uh, around Christmas for, for these young people. We used to do the International Shoebox Appeal for many, many years and we had a, a colleague of ours here, Colin Smide, uh, we call him Collie or Collie Wobblers to his friends. Uh, Col was very passionate about this, he loved Christmas, he, he knew what Christmas meant to his family and his grandchildren and he loved to see them happy. But he was also very aware of those other children in, in families that weren't so lucky. Uh, he used to go out of his way to bring in 40, 50, 60 shoeboxes himself. We wanted his legacy to live on. And uh, what we wanted to do this time of year again in November, uh, everyone is waiting eagerly for the, for the Christmas advert to come on and it brings great cheer and excitement that Christmas is on the way. But we're very much aware that for lots of families it also brings anxiety, worry, concern. How will we put food on the table? Will there be gifts under the tree this year? Uh, we wanted to go and work with Birmingham Irish Association this year, look at the children in our own community closer to home in Birmingham. Uh, we wanted to make sure that our children, our staff and all our community schools all got together to be able to bring toys to those who are in need on our doorstep this Christmas. The 
there's a widespread of schools involved in this uh, across Birmingham. Yeah, most definitely. And what we're looking to do is try to generate that little bit of friendly competition between schools. So we have Mr. Clinton over at St. Peter's uh, Catholic College, who they will also be doing something similar to ourselves here. Uh, we've got a family of schools. We call ourselves the Tolkien uh, Schools. Uh, and, and they're all Catholic schools, again, in the area, uh, such as Our Lady of Lords, um, St. Mary's, St. Jude's, St. Albans, just to name a few. And again, their children and their staff and their parents are all working away in the background, all bringing in donations, large, big, small, it doesn't matter. Any donation at all will be greatly received. And last year, again, the GA clubs did an incredible job. So the likes of, again, John Mitchell, Sean McDermott, and St. Brendan. So a lot of our students here at the school actually play for these clubs and they're on our doorstep here in, in the Kingsley area of Birmingham. But also um, um, the clubs at Erin Gabra and other clubs as alike, all Again, I mean, they've filled St. Anne's Community Centre with, with gifts, and again, they're on board this year. So again, anybody, it doesn't have to be Catholic schools, any school, any sporting organisation, any shop, business, whoever, if you want to get involved in this, then please do step forward. All the information's on our website. There's a GoFunding page to give cash donations if required. <laughs>I'm here at Bishop Channer School now uh, since about 2000. I came over to Birmingham in 1998 to study at Newman University. Uh, the plan was to do my three years training and go home back to Ireland, but it's still I'm still here, so it's very much home from home. And um, yeah, and, lo and loving it here. There's a massive Irish community, not just here in the school, but also across Birmingham area. And I'm very happy to be still here, uh, nearly, what, 20, 23, 24 years on. We also do additional charity work across the school is here as well, so the likes of um, generating and raising money for CAFOD International, so looking after poor communities across, across the world. Uh, we've recently worked with the parish in uh, St John and Monica, it's a primary school, um, the priest Father Mario there is looking at uh, donating teaching resources and the like to his parish back home in India. So again we did a, a, a non-uniform here and uh, sent money back to his parish in India. Uh, we're very passionate about the food appeal, three times a year. The, the main uh, key times of the year would be summer, Christmas and also the Easter time. So again, our, our students and families go out, bring in an extra one pound at the end of the weekly shop, bring in foods for those again who are struggling to put food on the table. Uh, very passionate about it and again, so proud of our students here. Of the little bit that they do makes such a huge difference overall. A talented uh, group of uh, students here, aren't you? Yeah, we definitely are. You know, we definitely come from music to sports to everything under the sunlight. This is brilliant here. Well done to them all at the Bishop Challoner Catholic College, and what a talented group of young students. Now it's time for a break and we'll see you in a few minutes. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Welcome back. 
Now it's always very sad when we lose a member of our family or somebody that we know. But it's even more so when it's a sudden death. Well that's exactly what happened to Kim Gohan. Her husband Brendan passed away very suddenly about 20 months ago. Since then Kim has been really struggling with her grief and sorrow. Then one day she decided to start a bereavement group to help other people like herself who were struggling with grief. The group is called Stronger Together. This is Kim's story. Well Martin, I lost my husband um, 20 months ago now, in February 2020. Um, it was a sudden death, so it uh, wasn't expected. Um, and uh, I wasn't coping very well and I didn't get on with um, the counselling. It didn't seem to work for me because People, had, if they haven't experienced close loss, I just felt that they didn't understand ex how I was feeling. So um, earlier this year, I just decided that I was going to quit my job. I just needed to change my life a little bit. And um, my company I worked for then um, offered me a sabbatical. They recognised that I wasn't really coping with my grief. Um, so I thought, right, okay, I'll take a couple of months off. Um, and uh, then one morning I woke up and I just knew that I needed to start a support group for other people. There's so many people out there that have lost people and especially with COVID and not being able to have funerals and not being able to say goodbye properly. I was very lucky that Brendan passed away before COVID and we had a big funeral and we were able to give him the send off he deserved. Um, but other people are not that lucky. So I decided that I would sort do a support group. And I, one of my sons said to me, um, have you researched support groups? And I said, well, I can't find one. And so we managed to find one in Nottingham and they were really helpful. They told me how they started, how often they meet, um, and they put me in touch with a UK support group. And I went on a course with them. They ran a course over three or four weeks, which gave you all the information you needed to set up a support group. And I contacted my local church, which is the Holy Family, and they're linked to St John's. And I was put in touch with Deacon Jim, and he, when I spoke to him, the first thing he said was, I've been looking for someone like you. I want to set up a support group. I know it's needed. And the two of us have put together this group. And we've had four meetings now. It's not all sadness. It's, it's we have a little bit of tears, usually mine. Um, but other people, it's just being able to talk to each other and, and say, I'm not coping with this, or I'm not sure about that, or, um, oh, you know, I'm missing my husband so much, or I'm missing my nan, and we used to do this, or we used to do that, and everyone's supporting and helping and saying, we can do that, or how about doing it this way, or, yeah, you're right feeling that way. And together, We've called the group Stronger Together, and we really are. It, it really helps each other just to, uh, just to share, because we're all feeling the same, and, and it's only us that really know how we're feeling. When we tried to promote it, we were saying, this is a group of people with shared experience. And, and we all know people who've suffered loss, and we, we're, we're very supportive of people we are, but, but if you've been through that kind of real personal loss yourself, you're really able to understand what the person around you is also feeling. And it's that shared loss that this group comes together, that the person beside you, the person across from you, the person that you're just chatting to, they actually really know how you feel. They kind of understand the challenge and the pain of trying to deal with that kind of loss. And I think that, that real understanding of each other's challenges just day to day, and somebody comes to the group and they don't feel great that day, everybody else in the group understands what that's like because they've had many days like that and i think really the group having that real connection 
of having gone through really similar tough experiences is one of the real important things that help people to realise how, how beneficial it should be and why they should, why they should come along. For the person that's gone, they're not suffering and it's maybe the perfect way for them. But for the people left behind, it's, you're not prepared. You're not expecting, you weren't warned. It's just, they're gone. And it's so hard to come to terms with. Brendan and myself, we had three boys and they're great. They are a great support. Um, and we've got six grandchildren and another one on the way and they're all so amazing and they're all, that's what keeps me going. We were together for 38, 39 years almost um, and we were just always two peas in a pod. We always went everywhere together, we did everything together, we never needed anybody else but the two of us and our kids, our boys, they were our world and our grandchildren now. By helping people to understand that we're very much here not to ask to force people to talk or to, to take part in any way, but just to get people to realise that this is a group of people with shared experiences that they're welcome to come along to. They can discuss their day or not discuss their day. So word of mouth is incredibly powerful for us as well. So we've had people that are coming already from other parishes and they're going into their parishes telling people the benefit that they're finding. And we have kind of bigger plans beyond our parish to take the group here, which a lot of work has been put into, into forming it, and then using that to go out to some of the other parishes that themselves don't yet have a bereavement group. And this could be a model for how they could put something together that, that we know already has been extremely powerful. I've had 10 other parishes already say, this is something that they like to do. But I believe that this bereavement group is helping you enormously because it's helping you to cope with your grief and you're trying to help other people with their grief. It's amazing how helping somebody else makes you feel so good. It's not about doing things for yourself, but when, you, when I came away from my first group um, and I, I said to Deacon Jim, it was, I was so happy because there was people that sat there and they talked to each other and they helped each other, they, they supported each other and that's all I wanted and that's all we need is, is support. So they're supporting me and I hope I'm supporting them. It's a really powerful thing and a really positive thing for the parish and it's really important that as a church we recognise the challenges and difficulties of people's lives especially during COVID and the pandemic, but really not just because of that. So it's important that we reach out to people, that we understand how people's lives are struggling and the difficulties they are. And as a church, we're there for them. And we provide what we can in help and support to, to try and assist them at least in some way to know that the, the church wants to try and help them and to, and to at least give them some strength during the difficult challenges that, that we all face. I, I'm a hospital chaplain as well as one of my, my other roles and I could see so much the challenges that people were facing. And, and I was very keen as it happens to want to try and put something in place here in the parish to help people of all, of all ages and all different circumstances and of all different situations. So when we had the opportunity to, to establish the group here and base it here, you know, I was, I was really positive about that and it was a great thing that we were able to just at least in some part way, try and make happen. What would you like to say to people that are sitting at home tonight watching you and maybe they've had a recent bereavement or maybe they've had a bereavement possibly a couple of years ago and they're apprehensive about coming to a group to get, and maybe they need some help. What would you like to say to them? Come along because just have a cup of tea you don't have to talk about your loss if you don't want to. You don't have to tell anybody anything if you don't want to. You can just sit and listen. But in listening, you will hear people that are going through the same thing as you. And if you had a loss and it was several years ago and you're still lonely or still suffering, come along because you've been through stages that other people are going through and you'll be able to help them without even realising it by telling them that, yeah, that's how you felt then. And they'll know that that's, that's normal. And of course, during the pandemic, we were very limited 
in who we could allow to be with people to help them through that time. So people have realized that there is a great need for, for the strength that the faith can give them to help somehow find some way of, of working through those challenges and what they face. We have two churches. We're quite a big parish within the diocese. So St. John's and Holy Family, those two churches came together some years ago as one, as one parish. And, and it's quite a diverse parish in, in age and in geographical area. So we, we serve the north of Luton. And again, it's an area where there's lots of building, there's lots of activity, there's lots of growth as well. And then we're part of the deanery of Luton, which is seven or eight parishes as well. So we're, we're a, a vibrant parish and, and this kind of activity is something that we really positively want to, want to promote. We meet on a Tuesday, um, second Tuesday of every month, and we meet here at St John's. Um, we meet at seven, um, and we've got a Facebook page, Stronger Together Bereavement Support Group, and they can contact me and message me through that. There's always somebody out there to help you to cope with your grief and sorrow. And I'm sure if you contacted Kim Gohan, she would love to hear from you and I'm sure she would guide you and help you and maybe set up your own bereavement group. Well, that's it for this week. Henry McGlade is back with his show from County Mayo next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we'll be here at 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. Until then, thank you all so much for watching.